Hey there, Rob. Thanks. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Becky, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Japan. For those of you that don't know, I used to live there. Um, I moved back to the United States in August. It'll be my two year anniversary of living back in the US, which is the longest I've lived here since I was in high school, which is crazy. It just seems a long time ago. My boyfriend has been looking into getting back into his degree field, which is games development and games dev programming, and has been looking into some um, games devs company in Japan. So obviously the conversation has come up again about if he got a job there, would we move? So we talked about some things that I did like and didn't like, and it got me reminiscent. And I thought it might be fun to share with you guys five things that I loved about Japan. So let's get started. And I lived in the Tokyo area, not actually in Tokyo, and not actually in that district, but for people that don't know Japan, that just makes more sense to them. I actually lived in Ibaraki-ken, which is like two prefectures above where Tokyo is, and I spent um, a lot of my time in Chiba. The, I lived kind of on the border of both those prefectures. The first year I lived in Japan, I lived in a city called Hokota, which I actually really liked. It was really small and quaint. Um, if you asked anybody from a bigger city, they would have told you that I lived in Inaka, which is like, you know, like the middle of nowhere, like small village, but it was really quite nice. It was a decent sized city. Um, and I really loved living there. Number one, the first thing about Japan that I absolutely loved was Narita Airport. Now, if you know me, you know that I rank airports. I have a list of all my favorite airports in the world, as well as a list of airports that suck. Manchester is at the top of that list right now. Manchester, UK, you need to get it together, okay? But Narita is pretty high up on the list of airports. I actually really enjoy everything is so streamlined. You go through customs so quickly. You go through immigration so quickly. The airport is spotlessly clean. Even in the middle of the night, you can still like get snacks and get food. They have like konbinis inside and just like, AT, like uh, just everything about this airport. I really like Narita. If I had the option of flying into Haneda, which is in like the center of Tokyo, Narita, which is in the city of Narita, which is in Chiba, so it's about an hour away from Tokyo, I would always pick Narita. Like, I don't care. I will take the train or the bus and all that good stuff. Like, that's another thing. It's so easy for Narita to just hop on a bus or hop on a train into the center city that doesn't cost too much. It's quick, efficient. People are so helpful in the airport there. It's, you don't really feel lost wandering around. I feel like the signage is really great just an airport I really genuinely like which seems a weird thing for a lot of people but not us wild things <laughs> like this is something that I know my other TCK nomad and expat friends all understand a good airport number two is Japanese konbinis now konbini which uh, is written in katakana um, just is like the Japanese Japanglishization of the word convenience store it's convenient it's konbini um my favorite is 7-eleven and there is a debate like between the 7-elevens the lawsons the mini stops like which one's the best um i preferred 7-eleven they have so many really tasty meals i got hooked on eating like spaghetti bolognese which sounds crazy but it was so 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 good mini stop also like in the summer does fresh soft serve and some summers they have melon flavor and they'll make you like melon soft serve parfait it's amazing like literally amazing so many of my favorite candies came from there so many of my favorite like sweets all that good stuff so and the one closest to my house when i lived in kashima kashima -shi, the second year i lived there i uh me and my flatmate ed actually made friends with the workers at the konbini so whenever we went in in the middle of the night we'd like chat and have a good time and that was just so much fun so i have great memories of the konbinis i love their convenience actually and when we say a convenience store it's really not the same like a japanese convenience store is convenient you need to print you need to fax you need to pay your bills you need to get household supplies you just want a snack you need to use the bathroom some of them have showers you need to take a shower like everything is right there it really is so convenient and i love that like i very much miss that moving on to number three 
cleanliness. Everything in Japan is spotless. It is always so clean everywhere. You could drive out to the middle of nowhere, be on a deserted stretch of highway, and decide to pull over and go to a gas station bathroom, and it will be cleaner probably than the one in your house. It's insane how neat and clean everything is. All public bathrooms have like a little cloth on the sink so that you can tidy up water splashes and it's just a habit that I got into and started using at home now and when I go to public restrooms here I always use my paper towel after I've dried my hands kind of with dry up the sink. I just like how much attention to detail is paid to respecting other people's space and keeping communal, I just forgot that word, keeping communal space is nice and tidy. To see other people consciously go out of their way to like pick up trash or clean up an area or something just kind of hit me in a spot. So now I still do that to this day. I'm like, yeah, if I hadn't been doing that before, why wasn't I? And if I was doing that before, that's great. But now I'm extra conscious about it. Like I make sure to pick up garbage that I see in nature or something. Or if someone spilled garbage elsewhere, like I'm going to clean that up out of consideration for the other people. Yeah, just cleanliness in general in the bathrooms and the stores and, you know, just random garbage places. Like, my apartment garbage here at the post boxes where you go pick up your mail, there's like a garbage can right there so you can dispose of junk mail. But people are just like, they always just throw the garbage wherever or like put things in the garbage that are not paper. So you get like funky smells in there because people are throwing like food and stuff in the garbage that's kind of meant for post. So it's just something that I always think about that this would never have been an issue. <laughs> when I lived in Japan, you never worried about like overflowing garbage cans or anything. The only strange thing about that though is that even though Japan like as a country is like a neat freak place like everything is rather tidy there aren't public garbage cans everywhere. Like you have to keep a little bag with you a little plastic bag or something because sometimes you'll have garbage and there'll be nowhere to throw it away. Like you just have to hold on to it I guess unless you can find a kombini which will have garbage and recycling bins in front of it or can pop into a different store or something but a lot of just places don't just have garbage cans out and about. People are just more responsible about holding on to their trash until they find a responsible place to throw it away whereas in a lot of other places they will just throw it on the ground or throw it out the window or something. Number four gas stations. I really enjoy Japanese gas stations. I had my own little K car, drove all over Japan, all over like Ibaraki and Chiba, down to Gunma with Fuji, like all kinds of driving with my little car. So to get gas, they have gas station attendants. So they fill your gas for you and you tell them what type of gas you want, how much gas you want. And then while they're filling your car, they also cleaning the windshields, cleaning all your windows, will take any garbage that you have from inside your car. Do you need a little bit of cleaning inside your car too? They'll wipe down the inside or give you a towel so you can wipe down the inside of your car. So every time you went to the gas station, you've got a mini car wash, like just a little bit of tidying up knickknacks and all that kind of stuff. And I just love that. I loved it. So now with my own car, my Subu, I have a Subaru, its name is Subu. Um, every time I go to the gas station, I'm like, oh, let's do a little bit of tidying up. Let's like go clean this out. Let's shake out the things. Like it's just how I used, I'm used to having my car in like this nice, neat, tidy way. And I wish we had gas stations like that here, but it's also not really a feasible thing. Even though there are things I loved about that gas station, they close at a certain time. Not all gas stations are 24 hours, whereas ours are. So if you were driving somewhere, and this has happened to one of my friends multiple times, if you are out late at night, gas stations will close at 7 or 8 p.m. and have not filled your tank, you might be out of luck. So <laughs> you might not be able to find a gas station. You might just have to wait it out or call for a friend or, or pray that your car will make it to a bigger city or a closer or, or your destination. Also, gas stations aren't always open, like not just 24 hours, but also seven days a week. Some days a gas station will just be closed, which can be really inconvenient if you have things to do. So. On the pro side, I really like the gas station's functionality and efficiency. On the con side, I really didn't like the hours of operation. <laughs> to me, it didn't make any sense. Okay, number five. The fifth thing I loved about Japan, and people ask me this all the time, what was one of your favorite things about Japan? And I always say the food, like obviously amazing Japanese food, but 
when my Japanese friends would ask me, oh, what's your favorite Japanese food? That's like a common question you get amongst foreigners. Like, oh, like what is your favorite type of American food? Like, oh, what have you really been wanting to eat? What's your favorite type of Japanese food? I think a lot of people answer like sushi or ramen. And that's not my favorite Japanese food is miso shiro. It's like miso soup, but I like the winter miso, which has got like dumplings in it and like some veg and it's just like chef's kisses like uh I could eat miso shiro almost every day like I don't care like I will just eat the miso soup every day oh it's just different than kind of what we get here a little bit more full a little bit more flavorful and I really really liked it I also like um something you can get at 7-eleven in the summer called dorayaki ice now, dorayaki is like two mini pancakes with red bean paste in the middle. I really like red bean paste. It's kind of sweet, um, so it's a nice little earthy flavored dessert. But in the summer, 7-Eleven makes dorayaki ice, and it has vanilla ice cream in the middle. So instead, it's like pancake, pancake, vanilla ice cream, and in the middle of vanilla ice cream, you still have the red bean paste. So, ah, oh, it's so good. Like, in the summer, I'd eat too many of them. Doriaki ice, like so many good ice cream flavors. I once had sweet potato ice cream that looked like a sweet potato and the potato outside was actually some type of waffle cone that they had made look like sweet potato. And to get to the ice cream inside, which was sweet potato flavored, you had to kind of like peel the potato or like eat the potato outside. It was so cool, so interesting. Thought it was amazing. Um, okonomiyaki is, an, it's literally translates to how you like it and it's like noodles or once I got one that was just like six different types of cheese. Do it. Can I do it? Ah. After cooking all the cabbage, you put it back in the bowl, and this time you mix with the egg batter. Then we cook it. Ed's is browning nicely. And you eat okonomiyaki with these teeny spatulas. You scrape it off, get it nice and hot. Ta-da! Plate, please. Thank you. Together, it's just chop it all up and it's just like ah <laughs> and even Indian food there has its own kind of styles and own kind of traditions similarly how in the UK um, butter chicken became a thing or chicken tikka became a thing that wasn't really what it was before something my flatmate and I used to do was once a week go to the one of our favorite Indian restaurants in our city and get cheese naan and normally you think of naan as like more of a flatter bread with maybe cheese on top or some cheese in the middle. No. In Japan, cheese naan is almost like a pizza and it's stuffed full of cheese, mozzarella, and like honey. So when you pull it apart, you get these long gooey strings of cheese and it's sweet and salty and we just get a little bit of curry and just cheese naan for We'd go into the restaurant and the owner would be like, oh, two cheese naan some this curry and, the, and a butter chicken to go. And I'm like, this is embarrassing because we're here every week and now you know that we're just eating cheese on all the time. So if you go to Japan, I definitely recommend you try those things. They are delicious. Ugh, I just think about it all the time. So those are five things I loved about living in Japan. Have you been to Japan? If you have, let me know what some of your favorite things are in the comments down below. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram and Twitter at BeckyRay14, and I will see you guys in the next.